Good morning. Um, I just arrived at one of my favorite trails. I have reviewed it before, but after watching the old video last night, I realized I should really make a better video of this place because it has some spectacular features. Since my only breakfast this morning was a couple of stale animal crackers, I'm gonna eat a little bit of tuna before I head out so that, you know, protein, can't go wrong there. So this is the second parking lot. You come in there off the road, you come down that hill and this is what you get to. And there's plenty of parking as you can see, lots of people here at the moment. And we're gonna go over here and start at this sign. You can get down the hill other ways, but there's a little steps, uh, sidewalk steps down this way. So Lock 12 historic area. And you'll get down these stairs. And it's a nice place to take kids though. If you even if you just want to come down here, there's picnic tables. There's a swing set up here. Some more picnic tables. And I'll show you this uh, historic um, site thing over here. I had reviewed it on another, whoops, on another trail. I better watch what I'm doing. On another video. But this little stairwell will lead down to where the trail starts. Just watch your footing. Don't be like me, be looking up while you're trying to do your video. So first I'm gonna head over here before I even go down the rest of the stairs because over here off to the side, there's a brown building. The first time I came here, I did not know that there was a bathroom here, <laughs> but there is. So, you know, you might choose to park on that side of the parking lot to be closer to the bathrooms. And also right past this bathroom, if you wanna go the other way on the Mason Dixon Trail. That heads out to Lock 15, but we're not going that way today. I'm just going over here to the bathrooms. Okay, heading back over to the steps and where the trail starts. There is, I believe, I can't remember what this is up here. It's a double melting pot of sorts, and I believe for silver. Let me get up to it. There's people here so I don't want to interrupt their day but I was going to show you before I got on the trail so what you're looking at here is a the tops of a restored lime kiln um, they were used in the 1800s and they're big two circular pots constructed of schist stone um, and this is where limestone gets burned down into lime if they have a double pot it increases their production i can get a very good picture of the sign here so i'm kind of reading off to you from the sign but it's a pretty cool thing to look at old stuff history i love little structures especially those made out of stone once you're done at the top, looking down at the kilns, you can walk around the little railing here and you can see the outside of this structure. Then you're going to continue on down the stairs into the woods. You'll cross a little wooden bridge here with a little uh, dream running under it. It's quite cute. I hear children running up behind me. This probably wasn't the best day to do this. Oh, There's the stream. Very cool sounds. The other side. We continue on down the pathways. Turns into a little bit of gravel. Boy, I had to wait for that whole group of kids and family to go by. 
they were so noisy. Um, so right at the beginning, before you even get to the next part, um, you can, there's a teeny little path off to the right here that you can go down and enjoy the little creek here. Big tree flowing creek. Now I'm gonna try to put on my microphone here. I It does work and it, it sounds better, but the problem is once I put in the receiver into my phone, it doesn't seem like my charging cord wants to stay in the port that is on it. So in other words, once I start running on low on battery power, it won't charge my phone up um, for my power pack. So we'll see how it goes. But I won't put it on until I meet up with any noisy groups of people. So you'll continue on down this gravel path. There's a couple of steps that come up from where we just were. Continues on the gravel path. And we hit now our first lock, historic lock structure. So you can go up and around, or you can go down and in between. So, seems like a lot of people are on top right now, so I'm going to head down this way. But know that you can go up and look down. Gravel trail. And they're quite, quite large. The last time I was here, there was a lot of water, like standing water, in here. And if you're so inclined, you can walk through here. It could be boggy. Never know what's in here. I won't get too far back right now. But the gate around the top goes the whole way around. It's nice to look at both angles. Just the way the stonework is laid. But the trail continues on past this initial site. And I didn't go down a lot of these paths last time because I didn't really know what was down them. <laughs> but there's a lot of different ways you can go on this path. Like I believe the Mason Dixon Trail continues over there at the end of this. But first, I want to go back through a couple of these smaller paths and have a little bit of adventure before I do that. This is the fourth time I've been down here. And every time's been just so a little bit different. this first path that I took led me out to this sort of cool overlook. I know from past experience that there'll be better uh, areas where you can view the river. But that is the Norman Wood Bridge right there. And this is the Susquehanna River. And what I hope to do today is go all the way up that way. I don't think you can see too much through the trees here. To the Holtwood Dam. There's still lots and lots of kids climbing around out through here. Um, this is one of the paths I had taken down before. Yes. Um, it's, this one's easy to see right off of the, the Mason-Dixon Trail. It has a huge sign warning about not getting in the water or being in the water when the sirens are sounding. The last time I was down here, there wasn't as much junk. So Hurricane Debbie just went through, so it's a possibility that this that has affected how much debris is laying around so we're back on the path if you can see i'll try to zoom in the mason dixon trail actually starts around this little gated lock structure and you come across this little bridge and this is where you go into the woods so the sign down to that is where they are down there messing around is right here but we're going to keep going this way and you'll just follow the blue blazes it's a nice walk in the woods and there are lots of little paths down to the water which i want to take a couple more today as they come up the path is um very well marked along through here lots of blue blazes um, there's a couple parts where there's rocks jutting out or roots, so just watch your footing. A nice couple back there, an older couple, wanted to get down to the river um, on one of the side paths. And there are two or three paths in the beginning of the hike like that, but mostly that's where all the families and kids go. 
However, as I told them, there are other paths further down that kick you close to the river and don't have as many kids and you don't have to deal with the debris. And I believe this is one of them. So getting closer, of course there's going to be some debris. Um, as I said, I think this one gets you closer to the river because there's, there's sand here, some debris. Oh, look at the mushrooms growing right in along the shore. But here, if you go through just a little bit of this, I wore longer pants today for reasons. You can go out through this kind of path. There's a little, little tiny bit of overground, but it is so worth getting through because just look at this view. Totally worth a couple of the weeds. These are just fabulous. You can practically walk. There's Holtwood Dam in the distance, but you can practically walk across this entire river on these stands. There, it's got grass in between, but you know, you're protected from the water. I mean, you can just rock hop basically the whole way across the river if you want, which no, I'm not going to do that today, <laughs> but you could. Uh, like right there, there's a little, um, in rivulet, I don't know what you call these things. It's going through the rocks and it's going over the rocks. So it's a little, but even there, <laughs> you could just hop. I mean, there's plenty of places to get across here. If that's what you are determined to do. And you look that way and you just see this beautiful shoreline. A lot of those rocks you can go out on and just sit there and have lunch or a snack. from the main path, the Mason-Dixon Trail. When you come up from that trail and you're back on the path, there's a couple of little paths here that go right out to another parking area. I'm not sure what road this is. It's probably McCall's Ferry though. And this might be a place to park if you just want to go out to see the river. Surrounded by jewelweed. Totally happy about that. Jewelweed is the antidote for poison ivy. So when you see it, say a little prayer. All right back on the MDT. So quick correction, that is actually River Road, which is also called McCall's Ferry Road. They're just different on each side of the main road. But that parking spot is on River Road. And it's just uh, a little ways down the road where you could actually just park in that little parking spot if you just wanted to walk straight down and see the river or even start the trail from that area. It's kind of cool. Down, right down below me here is a little creek running alongside. You can barely see it through the foliage here, but it's there. And of course on trails like this, you know, because of storms, you're going to see some debris. So far, nothing I can't easily step over. But it's so much quieter than it was with all those people around. Oh, so glad I, that is over. I kind of want to get down there. There looks like there's a lot of really cool, interesting things, but it's a little bit treacherous. There's, I looked up and down here a little ways and there's no really good pathway down. So I'm going to wing it. Got to put the phone away though. So I just came down that and I seem to be on much more level ground now. And then there's this little slope and there's a rock that you can stand on and walk out to the left here that's right in the middle of this beautiful little creek. So I'm gonna try to get down here without hurting myself again. <laughs> I 
made it down. Look how pretty that is. And we're gonna turn around this way and go across these rocks to see where we come out here. <laughs> and I'm thinking it's on this big old stone by the river. We shall see. Oh yeah, look at this, gorgeous. There's a little trickle of water running down through it. Still, very treacherous, watch your footing. Hopefully I don't fall. There's a tree here, you can hang on to that. I'm gonna head over there. Probably gonna put my phone away for a few minutes. It looks like there's another path that goes up to this part. So it's potentially somewhere you could just walk down to right from the path and not have to go through those rocks that I kind of went through. I'm just adventurous like that. So I walked across that. Not real hard. I get down on my hands and knees sort of and little do a little rock scrambling. But you could walk all the way out to the water here. Lots of places to put to step. There's a nice big tree here to hang on to. Right here, it looks like the water's kind of stagnant. But that goes right out to the river. The beautiful scenery. Continue on to the, around to the other side of this massive rock. There's little pools of water. It's also very beautiful. But you can walk for quite a ways and just explore like all over this rock. Pretty sweet. So I climbed up on top of one of the larger rocks. It's the last large rock in this little segment. And look at this. Whole wood dams right there. We'll be going up to that. But just see all the little rocks and big rocks and things you can just hop around and play on all day long. Like. There's always something new to see. Just depends on how far you go out, where you go. And even which direction you go, really. I also wanted to say, these little patches of sort of deadish algae or fungus, they are actually excellent uh, gripping uh, spots. So use them, step on them. They aren't slippery right now. Now, if they're wet, they would probably be slippery. But on a dry day like today, take full advantage of them. just say that all along this path there are a number of teeny little man-made paths um, some of them possibly game trails but they either way they look the, the description of what you would say a game trail is and any of them will take you out to the river there so you could go out to see off of any one of those rocks along the side that are pretty much overlooks if you wanted to but let me caution you if you're going to do that, be prepared or that. There's a lot of thorny brush down through there. Now I knew that going in and I still had my pants rolled up, but you know, I'm not that concerned. I'm more concerned with poison. The briars, eh, you know. We're still meandering and we're soon gonna meet up to where we have to cross a road or you can go under the bridge and through the creek. Up through here too, I, I saw this last time I was here. This is also another structure, ruin, that was part of the lock system. 
huge history of the lock system down through here. And uh, this one's accessible if you want to walk around in it. I'm just excited to get to the other part of the trail, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here. But if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I don't know, that might be lock 10 because where we started at is lock 12. So 10 or 11. But I'm just going to stay on the main path here, the Mason Dixon Trail, which is marked very well. Blue blazes everywhere. Um, you can continue to go on the Mason Dixon Trail, and I think that you can go down this way and cross this little creek. So I'm going to take a look at it and see how deep it is today. One time I went across, the other time I decided it was too deep, and I just went up on the road. But either or, still a pretty little stream. So there's a path down to it. See, today I have time. And so I'm going to explore things that I hadn't been able to previously. Little waterfall here. First one of the day. Very pretty. walked up from down there. It is so nice. I brought my water shoes along today for just such an occasion that I could walk in this little stream. I remembered how shallow it was and how cool the water was. Here's some more little cascades. Still gotta watch your footing. I will never stop saying that because one little misstep and you can fall and that would be me so we are now under this bridge the path comes down to this and you are meant to ford across it at this shallow juncture the path goes right back up over here which is where i'll be going probably back up that way but i want to head towards this other little waterfall this part is so pretty we just love coming here. If you have never been down to this trail, you need to come. Of course, there's a little graffiti, but I just keep my eyes down. Rocks. It's a little deeper over here, so I'm probably not going to go into that. Uh, let me just see. It's not bad. It'll probably go up to my knees. I don't really feel like doing that today. But... I wanted to say there's another waterfall up further behind it. Now that past that, if I recall, is private property. So past that waterfall. So really, it's not a good idea to go over there anyway. But it is so pretty. Just to look at.
there's people here. <laughs> Once you come up that kind of rugged climb, it's very short, but you gotta grab on roots and rocks to get up it. And you're right beside the bridge here. So if you walk right around the side of the bridge, you come out to this little flat area. See the graffiti? But you can walk over this way and get a much better view of these waterfalls. Just be careful. There is, it is dirt and it's dry. I have to be very careful on any ledges because I'm clumsy. But it does give you a, a really different view. So I kind of like it. So after I got home and I started editing um, the footage that I had, I decided to make this into two separate parts because the section before you cross over the road is just as beautiful and has its own merits as the section on the other side of the bridge. So stay tuned for part two.